The next speaker is Erez Bell from the Weizmann Institute. And the title is, uh, we'll see the title. Okay, and the title is Monte Carlo Studies of Quantum Critical Methods. Right. <laughs> It's not the one. Uh, right. So um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, 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 Yoram and uh, uh, Moshe for uh, uh, putting together this uh, nice workshop um, uh, and uh, to, the, to all the guests that, that came. Uh, uh, so it's, it's been great. Uh, lots of my friends are here. And uh, uh, as a result, I uh, had to change the title. So uh, you've just heard about spin-resolved correlations. So I'll talk about different kind of uh, correlations. I'll, I'll talk about correlated metals. Uh, so uh, um, basically, I'll talk about quantum, uh, quantum critical phenomena in metals. Now, uh, uh, you probably, uh, uh, right, so before I start, let me just uh, uh, acknowledge my uh, um, collaborators on, on this work. So uh, th these are the uh, students who did uh, uh, all of the hard work. Uh, Sam uh, just moved from Stanford uh, uh, to MIT as a postdoc. Uh, uh, Yoni is my student, and he might be somewhere in here uh, or not. Uh, and uh, Max is a student in, uh, in, in Cologne, and uh, these are the more senior uh, collaborators on the different parts of the work. So uh, you're all probably familiar with this book about uh, a, a quantum critical phenomena. So a quantum criticality, uh, an insulator, is actually a pretty well uh, understood phenomenon. Uh, uh, however, what, ha what happens when a, a system with a Fermi surface goes critical? So now the situation is much more complicated because uh, unlike in an insulator where we have critical modes typically just at one wave vector that, that go critical, now we have the entire Fermi surface that might participate. And that's what, what makes this problem difficult, but it also makes it uh, much more fascinating. And uh, uh, just to demonstrate that this is not just an academic exercise, uh, there are many systems uh, in nature that show this kind of uh, phenomenon. This is one of the iron-based uh, 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 superconductors, and this is its uh, phase diagram. So x here is a... Uh, a composition, it's the, uh, a, a, it's the a, 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 a phosphorus a, a, a percentage, and this is a uh, temperature. So as you tune X, you have a, uh, a spin density wave phase that goes down to, to zero a, 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 a temperature at some X. And uh, close to that point, you actually have an onset of, uh, a, of a superconducting phase. Now, uh, what's shown here on top of that is, uh, is this uh, a color scale. That's the uh, a exponent of the resistivity as a function of temperature. So they fit it basically to this uh, form. Uh, the resistivity is some constant plus a, a times t to the power n. And it's this power uh, that's shown here. So it changes from blue, which is close to 2, uh, to red in this uh, quantum critical fan, that sort of in this fan-shaped region uh, that uh, uh, seems to emanate from the vicinity of this uh, putative quantum critical point. OK, so, so uh, this is a work by uh, uh, Matsuda's group. This same kind of phase diagram, where you have a magnetic order uh, that's tuned down to 0 by some parameter that's uh, typically uh, either composition uh, or pressure. And then you have a, a, a superconducting dome just where the uh, a magnetism goes to zero, that actually repeats itself in, in many unconventional superconductors. So the, the, it, 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 this is a different type of iron-based superconductor. It, it, this is a, an organic superconductor, a, an electron-doped cuprate, a, and a uh, heavy fermion superconductor. So all of these materials that of are, uh, of course, microscopically completely different have the same topology of the phase diagram. And this kind of suggests that there's uh, there's an underlying a, a, a unified mechanism be, be behind all of these, a, a, of these systems. And a, a, in all of these systems, the uh, a superconductivity is, is strongest close to the point where the magnetism is just about to go away. Okay, so this is what makes us think that quantum criticality somehow is involved. A, a, okay, so these, these uh, figures are taken from these reviews. A, so a, a, this is my outline. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, uh, about two types of quantum critical points in metals. I'll talk about uh, a magnetic or a antiferromagnetic quantum critical point and an emmatic quantum critical point. I'll explain what, what I mean by that. That's been mentioned uh, by Liang uh, 
uh, earlier, pneumatic order. Okay, uh, most of the talk is actually gonna, going to be about uh, a, a pneumatic, and I'll mention some results on uh, a, a antiferrum kinetic critical points near the end. A, 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 okay, so my plan would be to uh, a, introduce a, the Ising pneumatic order, a, a talk a little bit about uh, generality and about uh, a quantum critical points in metals, and then I'll uh, introduce some lattice models that I can study using quantum Monte Carlo a, without the sign problem, and I'll show some results. Okay, so a, a, let me look a little bit in more detail into uh, the phase diagram of the, the iron-based superconductors. So uh, we saw that there's a magnetic order. It turns out that there's another type of order that's actually pneumatic order that's uh, a, also taking place in these systems and also uh, actually is tuned to zero as a function of x. So a, a, in the system, this is an a, a, a iron, a arsenide system. A, there's an a, a antiferromagnetic phase that has this kind of wave vector. This is a square lattice of irons, and a, the wave vector in this uh, a square lattice of, of the magnetism is actually either pi zero or zero pi. So a, the uh, magnetic wave vector actually breaks a, the uh, C4 rotational symmetry of the system down to uh, C2. It has to choose to go either pi zero or zero pi. Okay, so there are these two a, configurations. A, a, and uh, the system chooses a, a spontaneously a, one of these. Now, a, how does this order melt? Well, it turns out that this order a, can actually melt into stages. So when you start raising uh, temperature, okay, if at, at low temperature, say along this, in, in this region, you have this state, okay, and then a, you lose the magnetic order, but the system can still remember the orientational order, okay? So for instance, if you look at the spin-spin correlations between neighbors, they, they would be different for a uh, horizontal neighbor and a vertical neighbor, okay? So you can still a, a retain the Z2 a, a, a symmetry breaking even though the magnetic order is gone, and presumably that's what's going on is this sliver between uh, T and L, which is the uh, antiferromagnetic temperature, and T structural, which is a structural transition where the symmetry of the lattice goes from, uh, from C4 to C2. And uh, only at the higher temperature, you melt also this Ising order, okay? And you go into an isotropic phase where the C4 symmetry of the crystal a, a, is retrieved, okay? So, so this kind of two-step melting can explain why this uh, transition is actually split here. So there's magnetic order, but there's also this other type of order that breaks rotational symmetry uh, twofold, and that's, that I'll uh, refer to as an Ising pneumatic order, okay? So, uh, a, 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 a just to show a, a evidence that a, a there is indeed a, a, a Ising pneumatic criticality in this a, a material. They have, there have been experiments by a Ian Fisher's group. They, they, they measured the um, a elastoresistive a response. So they, they, they basically apply strain along a, either X or Y and, and measure the uh, resistivity and a, the isotropy in the, in the system. So that, if you like, is like a, a pneumatic susceptibility. It, it, it tells you how a, a, a susceptible the electrons are to, to breaking the C4 symmetry. And they find that the, uh, this uh, a, a elastoresistive a response, a, a, a response actually grows very rapidly as, a, as you lower temperature in, the, in, these, in these systems. A, and a, it actually matches pretty well to this kind of form. So it's a Curie-Weiss-like form. A, okay, so the, uh, a, a, the uh, a, um, elastoresistive coefficient goes like a constant plus A over T minus T star, where T star uh, depends on X, on this on, on, uh, a composition. And moreover, T star uh, seems to go to zero at some a, a critical point, which is near optimal doping for superconductivity. Okay, so this would be the quantum critical point for the Ising pneumatic. And indeed, you see their uh, divergent susceptibility with a very particular exponent. Basically, it uh, diverges like constant over T. Sorry, in the previous slide, you cannot see that it goes to No, so, so here it's, it's uh, well, it should go to zero somewhere because here it's all uh, C4 symmetric. Okay, but, but it's hard to identify this point. Okay, the, the measurement I've, I've shown are actually outside of the superconducting dome. They're here. Okay, because it's uh, resistivity, you, can, you, you, you cannot measure it in the superconducting state. Okay, they, they, you can suppress the superconductor by field, but they haven't done that here. Another question, so is it just the, the spin symmetry which is very broken in the pneumatic, or the, also 
the lattice itself, say the lattice constant? The uh, lattice constant is different in the A and B direction. Okay, so, uh, um, uh, right, that's, that's actually how they measure, th that's, that's this line. And you interpret that as coming from the electronic degrees of freedom. That's right, so I, I'm, uh, I'm uh, giving a scenario where it might come from the uh, electronic degrees freedom of freedom, even though for most of what I'll say later, it actually doesn't matter, okay? I'll, 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 uh, the, the only thing that will matter is the symmetry of the order parameter, which is the same in both cases. Right, okay, so, uh, a right, so a, 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 this is an isognomatic transition schematically, okay, so for whatever reason, either because of the electrons or because coupling to phonons or, or something, I have a, uh, a, a system with, uh, with a, a crystalline C4 symmetry that gets, bro gets broken spontaneously uh, to C2, okay, so that's like a, a, the square unit cell gets uh, elongated along some direction, and in, in the case I've described, the system is also metallic, so that means that the Fermi surface would also respond to this uh, asymmetry breaking. So we have a, a C4 symmetric Fermi surface, which uh, would become elongated a, along one direction, okay? And the entire Fermi surface would have to respond to this uh, a, a distortion. Okay, so uh, this is an old problem. What are the universal properties of such a quantum, of such an isognomatic quantum critical point in a, in a metal? Okay, and it turns out to be a hard problem, so uh, the, some of the open questions are uh, what are the critical uh, 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 exponents at the quantum critical point do, uh, due to the scattering of the fermions uh, off these critical modes, do you get a breakdown of Fermi liquid theory, do you get a non-Fermi liquid, uh, and uh, 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 lastly is the uh, uh, quantum critical point always masked by some other order? So a, these uh, a quantum critical fluctuations of the Fermi surface can mediate attractive interactions between fermions. And for instance, they could lead to a superconducting state, which would gap out the Fermi surface in turn. And then a, you go back to the usual a, a, a quantum critical point, essentially a, in, a, in an insulator. It's, an, it's in a superconductor, but the fermions are gapped. So a no Fermi surface, and you go back to the usual, a, a, to the usual scenario. Okay, so the question is sort of, uh, you expect uh, something to break down, either Fermi liquid theory breaks down, uh, which, and then you'll get a, 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 a non-Fermi liquid region uh, above the quantum critical point, and then maybe at a lower temperature you get superconductivity, uh, or a, a, the uh, a, a, a superconductor preempts the uh, non-Fermi liquid, and you'll get a direct transition from something that looks like a Fermi liquid into a superconductor, okay? And the uh, quantum critical point is sort of buried under the, the, uh, the superconducting phase. Uh, which one of these uh, comes first is, is something that's under debate. What's the difference between non-Fermi liquid and quantum critical? Uh, right, so, so, so uh, here uh, the uh, question is how, uh, um, um, what are the spectral properties of the fermions? So do they still look Fermi liquid-like? Or, or no, okay, so, so, um, so, so here you, you, you sort of see large deviations from Fermi liquid theory before you enter the superconductor, and here you don't, okay, so that's the difference. For instance, if you look at the lifetime of, uh, of the electron spectral function, does it, does, does it go like T squared, or does it have some exponent which is smaller? Okay, so, a uh, right, so, so, uh, a, 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 a one problem that you can actually uh, investigate analytically is what happens away from the quantum critical point. So su suppose that you artificially make the coupling between uh, critical modes and the uh, fermions on the Fermi surface to be weak. Uh, then you can uh, essentially do a weak coupling BCS theory as long as you're not quite uh, right at the uh, uh, quantum critical point, which is where uh, BCS theory would uh, necessarily break down. Okay, so, so here uh, the problem is uh, a tractable. What you find is that uh, a, a, a superconductivity is enhanced. Moreover, it's a, a enhanced in all pairing channels as you approach the a quantum critical point. So a, a both S wave, P wave, D wave, a, all get sort of the same boost. A, that was the effect that uh, Liang was referring to earlier. Okay, but what happens a, right at the quantum critical point is still unknown. That's, that's where the uh, analytic theory breaks down. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, many, many theorists have, have uh, worked on this problem over the years, and, and these problems are still open. Uh, so uh, um, we just want to uh, 
know the answer for this problem, okay? So, so uh, um, uh, uh, which of these is correct? What are the critical exponents and so forth? Okay, so, so uh, uh, one approach is to uh, write lattice models that we can simulate numerically. Now, uh, since these problems involve fermions, you, uh, you worry usually about the, uh, the fermion sign problem. Uh, now here it turns out that uh, these family of problems actually are tractable without the sign problem. And uh, that, that, that was, that, that was uh, pretty much our, our insight and, and, and uh, 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 that, that uh, uh, allows us to, to um, uh, make some progress here. Okay, so uh, uh, what I'll do now is introduce a lattice model that gives me a, uh, a pneumatic a quantum critical point in the middle. Okay, so it's an artificial model, but since the properties that I'm interested in hopefully are, are universal, it doesn't, it, I, I don't care, I, I just want a model that realizes a, this, this, uh, this kind of qu um, quantum critical point in a metallic system. Okay, and hopefully the, pro the properties would be universal. Okay, so uh, this is my model. I have a square lattice. On every side, I have a, a, a spinful electrons that, that can hop. And on every bond, I have an Ising spin. That, uh, it's, a, it's a pseudo spin. It can be up or down. Okay, it, it has nothing to do with the physical spin. It actually couples to the bond density and not to the spin density. Okay, to the charge density. And uh, this is my Hamiltonian. Okay, so these, these are just uh, a tight binding electrons. These are my pseudo spins. It, they have a, uh, a transverse field Ising model Hamiltonian, so they, they, they're, they're coupled by uh, a, an exchange coupling that goes on the, a, 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 on the diagonal to the neighbors. A, it's anti-ferromagnetic in, in, in sign, okay, so they, they like to be opposite. A, and they have a uh, transverse field that gives them a quantum dynamics. And a, 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 this is the term that couples the fermions a, to the, uh, the pseudo-spins, okay, so the the hopping of the fermions on a bond depends on the uh, sign of the corresponding pseudo spin, whether it's up or down. That's right. I need that because of the sign problem, actually. Okay. So uh, um, it's also true that real real electrons are spinful. So that's a that's a that's a correct feature of the model. But uh, yeah, but it helps me here with the sign problem. Right. Okay. So so. Uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, parameter alpha determines the strength of the coupling between the quantum uh, critical modes of the pseudospins and the electrons. Okay, so the bond, the, the bond density of the electrons uh, 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 couples to the local uh, pseudospin of that bond with a, a coefficient alpha times t, where t is just uh, sets the units. That's the hopping parameter of the electrons. So that's, that's my model. Okay, so uh, in, in, if, I, if I crank V to be uh, large enough or H to be small enough, I'll go into the, the uh, pneumatic phase. What is the pneumatic phase here? It's, it's simply the ordered phase for the pseudospins. Okay, so the, pseudo, the, the pseudospins like to uh, a, a order antiferromagnetically, and when they do, they actually uh, d a, a also induce this, a, a, a distortion of the Fermi surface of the electrons through this term. Okay, so... so uh, uh, when alpha is equal to zero, I basically know what the properties of this model uh, are. Uh, the uh, uh, transverse field Ising model uh, uh, undergoes as a function of H over V, a, uh, a Wilson Fisher uh, D equals two plus one quantum critical point, and the uh, fermions are just free. Okay, and now I'll crank up alpha and, uh, and uh, um, uh, study this, uh, this problem. Okay, so, so uh, how do I actually do that? How do I uh, study this problem? Well, uh, my tool would be uh, determining qu um, quantum Monte Carlo. Uh, okay, so I basically uh, formulate my problem as a path integral and uh, integrate out the fermions. Okay, so I get some effective action for the pseudo spins in space time. And uh, this uh, uh, effective action has the form of uh, b basically the action of the transverse field Ising model times the uh, uh, determinant of some fermion matrix that I get from uh, a, a doing the path integral over the fermions exactly. The action is actually quadratic in the fermions, so I can, I can do that step exactly. Okay, so a, a basically uh, this, the a sign problem arises when this effective action is not positive definite. So I can't treat that as a Boltzmann weight, and uh, that's basically the sign problem. Now here, because of the fact that uh, there are two, two uh, spin flavors of the electrons, they're both coupled equally to the pseudo spins, 
and uh, a, a, everything is real, so I have a uh, determinant for upspins and one for downspins, they're the same, a, and uh, two real quantities, so, so it's the square of, of some real, real quantity. Okay, so this means that in this case there's, there's, no syner a, 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 there's, there's actually no sign problem. For the case of an anti-ferrum magnetic transition in a, in, a, in a metal, there's a different effective action, and uh, things are a little bit harder because now the action actually depends on the spin. So uh, the anti magnetic order parameter couples the spin, but it, it turns out that that problem can actually be formulated in a way that uh, is free from the sign problem. Okay, so that was shown in this, in this paper. Uh, so uh, um, I'll show mostly results for the pneumatic case, but we also have some results for the anti magnetic case. I'll, uh, if I have time, I'll allude to that at the end. Okay, so, so uh, that is my plan. I'm, I'm basically uh, uh, integrating out the fermions, doing um, a, a bosonic a quantum Monte Carlo for, for the uh, pseudo-spin degrees of freedom, and now I'll show you some, some results. Okay, so first of all, the phase diagram. So uh, I'm gonna show the phase diagram as a function of two parameters. I fix T, I, I fix alpha to some, to, to some value, and this is the phase diagram as a function of H over V, which is the uh, a transverse field of the pseudospins. So that's a parameter that controls the strength of quantum fluctuations uh, of the pseudospins, and this is temperature, in, uh, measured in units of V also. Okay, so the gray line here is what happens when alpha is equal to zero. So you, you see this, uh, this line here is the pneumatic, is, is the Ising pneumatic transition. A, 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 okay, and it has this, uh, a, a, this form, it, has a, a, it uh, intercepts zero, it seems to uh, intercept zero at a, 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 an infinite slope, as it should. This is a, a critical exponent of the Ising model. And you see that when you turn on alpha, okay, so a, a, this is alpha equals zero, no coupling, and this is some value for alpha, a, a, alpha equals a half you actually get a different exponent of the, uh, a, of the uh, a, a T pneumatic as a function of H. A, the uh, quantum critical point also shifts to a different value of H. That's, that's uh, expected, but much, what's, what's more important for us is that it seems that the critical exponent actually has changed. Okay, so here it looks pretty much linear. So it looks like a, a T pneumatic and also some crossover temperature in the isotropic phase that we've defined here, it doesn't matter exactly how. They both go like HC minus H, H critical minus H, a, to, uh, to a power A, which is close to one. Okay, so this is a new critical exponent that uh, implies that indeed we have a new type of quantum critical point here. What is beta? Uh, right, so, so uh, uh, we haven't quite measured beta. Uh, I, I think we can extract it from the exponents we do have, but right, let me, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the exponents I have. And, uh, um, right, so, so uh, the next thing that we've measured is the uh, top correlations in the quantum critical region. So we, we looked at uh, a, a correlation functions of the Ising pneumatic field as a function of uh, frequency and momentum. Okay, and uh, we, we, we look at that across this fan uh, so uh, this is what the data looks like. Okay, so this is for different temperatures and different uh, 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 different values of uh, of h. So this is actually as a function of h minus h, h critical, the distance from the uh, quantum critical point. You see this rising of the pneumatic susceptibility as you approach the uh, critical point, and this is scaled as a function of h minus h c divided by t. Okay, so a, a, all this data seems to a, collapse on one line. This is actually chi times t, times t. It's not times t squared. Yes. Of the spins. Okay, so this is the this is the pneumatic susceptibility of the system. Okay, and it turns out that uh, a, a, all the data is a function of uh, a temperature, a h minus h c, and uh, wave vector can actually be uh, collapsed at, at zero Matsubara frequency, can be collapsed onto this, uh, this uh, a simple form. Okay, so um, a, 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 the uh, a exponent of one of, of the uh, critical temperature as a function of H minus HC can actually be read off from here. That's when this thing uh, diverges uh, at Q equals zero. Uh, okay, so in, in uh, particular for Q, uh, Q equals zero as a function of H and T, we get the same kind of Curie-Weiss law that they actually saw uh, in the uh, elastoresistive measurements. 
a, okay, so we also have some data as a function of omega. If you look at chi as a function of q and omega, a, or, or a, 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 a q omega t and h, you get uh, a, a pretty good agreement with this form. I, I've, I've, not, I've not shown that here. This is something that we still don't understand. So, so uh, a chi inverse go, it seems to go over, over a broad range, like a constant plus mod omega, which is a surprise. A, a, most of the conventional theories give you uh, a mod omega over q here. That's Landau damping. A, this is something that uh, we still don't understand. And uh, a, a four, not five. Five? Uh, four. Um, right, so, so uh, a, a right at q equals zero, it actually doesn't have this form. It, it's, you, you, you have to go slightly away from q equals zero, and then it looks like uh, basically this plus constant times mod omega. Okay, so uh, the, the, the constant doesn't depend on Q. That's the, that's the surprise. Yeah, what, what, uh, a, what uh, the conventional treatment gives you is mod omega over Q. So the, the, uh, the slope should actually increase when you go to smaller Q. That's what we don't see. Right, so this is actually something that's, that's surprising to us. We're still trying to understand it. And, uh, um, a, but uh, it also, it's also interesting. It implies that the... A dynamical critical exponent, that is the, the way that omega and q scale at the quantum critical point is actually different from what a hertz millis theory would predict. So here we get a, a dynamical critical exponent of two, a, and uh, a, from her, a hertz millis you get three, for instance. Okay, so, so uh, a, there are some more results on, the, on, on this problem. So I've, I've shown correlations of the pseudospins. We can also measure a, a, a correlations of the, of the electrons. So it turns out that uh, we don't find a superconducting phase here, even at the quantum critical point, at the apparent quantum critical point, down to a pretty low temperature of EF over 100. A, a, okay, we, we tried to look for signatures of, uh, of, an, of breakdown of uh, Fermi liquid theory. So uh, these are actually pictures of the uh, a Fermi surface and the disordered phase at the critical point and a, a, in the ordered phase. This, is, uh, this quantity is basically the uh, correlation function of the fermions at tau equals beta over two. Okay, and we look at this, uh, this uh, parameter, which is actually uh, the, uh, a, what would be the quasi-particle weight if we extrapolate to uh, a t goes to zero. So uh, uh, this is what it does. At, uh, a, as a function of the direction along the uh, a, a Fermi surface. Okay, if you focus on, on the, this angle, theta equals zero, okay, I won't go into details. It does seem to go down. In a Fermi liquid, this should saturate to a constant. In a non-Fermi liquid, this would go to zero with some exponent. Now, it's, hard, it, it's actually hard for us to tell. It looks like if it's a non-Fermi liquid, it's a very weak one. If you, try to, if you force this into a form of an exponent, you'll get a very small exponent. But uh, 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 this is still not clear. So it's not clear whether the system eventually would um, uh, develop into uh, a non-Fermi liquid or become superconducting before it has the chance to. Why, why is this quasi-particle weight given from that formula? Right, so what, what this, uh, uh, this is an um, identity. So, so uh, uh, what we actually compute is the uh, a Green's function at, at uh, a time, a imaginary time uh, displacement of beta over two. Okay, and th that, that can be shown to be equal to, to an integral over the, the real frequency of uh, a, the um, spectral function divided by cosh beta over two, a beta omega over two. So it's basically uh, a, an integral over the spectral function from frequency zero to temperature, to, to a scale of the order of the temperature. If you go to a very low temperature, you get the, in a Fermi liquid, you get the uh, quasi-particle weight. Ah, if you took beta to infinity. Yes. Yeah. Right, so the, in the limit, it should go to the quasi-particle weight. What do you expect for a case where omega goes like Q squared and not Q cubed, as you said? What do you expect the quasi-particle residue to look like? Yeah, so it, it should go like square root of t. If you, if you, if you do naive, um, if you assume that there's omega over t scaling, which there isn't necessarily, it would go like square root of t. Yeah, so, so it, it should go to zero. This is definitely not square root of two, it, not, not in this regime. Okay, so, so uh, uh, right, so, so uh, um, uh, okay, this I said. Let me just flash this one result uh, for a different problem, for the uh, case of an uh, antiferromagnetic uh, transition in a, in a metal. 
Here I haven't shown the action, okay, but there are some antiferromagnetic uh, fluctuations in a system a, a, with a, a uh, Fermi surface. This is the phase diagram we found for that system. This is our tunic parameter, some zero, a, a zero temperature parameter that controls the strength of the magnetic fluctuations, and this is temperature. So we have a, an, anti, a, a, an antiferromagnetic phase that's tuned to zero as a function of R, and uh, a, close to the point where a, it drops to zero, we get this uh, D-wave superconducting phase in a, in a dome-shaped like a, a region, and a, you see this uh, kind of bending back of the antiferromagnet when you go into the D-wave superconductor, that's presumably because of phase competition. The two order parameters are competing for the same order parameter, for the same Fermi surface. Um, above the uh, superconducting region, we find a region where we get uh, strong diamagnetism, a, 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 a sort of a precursor of the, of the superconducting transition. Uh, there are some more results, okay? We see a pseudo gap. There's a gap opening in the fermion spectrum above TC. Um, a, there's uh, some moderate enhancement of, of charge density wave correlations. And a, a, the, uh, a, a, this is, should be chi inverse. The uh, Z here is two, as, is, is two as well, but here we actually expect two. Uh, so, uh, right, so with that, let me just uh, f a, f a flash my, my conclusions and, uh, and uh, a, a, a thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. A quick question. Can you speak up? I'm asking yeah. if it's possible to, to, to make some progress analytically, like uh, writing. Right, a right. For yeah, so, so it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's um, um, the field theory that people believe uh, to describe this problem is basically a scalar field that's coupled to a Fermi surface. Okay, so it couples to the, to the density. That, uh, that's not a solved problem, okay? That's a hard problem on itself. But uh, that gives you, if, if you treat it using some approximation, RPA, that would give you Z equals three. But that doesn't seem to, uh, to give you the right answer here, okay? Uh, and we, we, th we have some ideas why, where it breaks down. Okay, it, it could, could also be that it breaks down because the approximation is not correct, but uh, maybe there's some deeper reasons. Okay, while uh, Eitan is uh, getting yeah. ready, maybe we take more. another question from Adi. Infinity or zero or something? Yeah, so, so that's, that's, a, that's actually a very interesting uh, uh, um, aspect of this problem. So, so uh, there, there, there has been a proposal that the, the character of the transition can actually change as a function of the ratio of velocities. Uh, but that's, that's not clear yet. I mean, it's, it's not... Comparable, or, or uh, of the same order of magnitude. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you so much. Okay.